doing a podcast right now with Once for Kicks, uh, the guys I grew up with for the most part, and they released a, a new album. And I, I have my notes here. It's called Learned Lessons. And uh, I'm just I'm stoked to talk to these guys, especially with everything that's been going on in the world. Um, and the fact that they put out a new album. So we're here to talk about how that came together. The fact that they're a band. Uh, they've been a band since 1999, I believe. Right, guys? I think so. Yes. Yeah. And they're still making it happen. And uh, so um, we're still we're still waiting, Mike, for, for a few minutes here. But anyway, Mike is the drummer, which there you go. Uh, no offense to the drummer. <laughs> <laughs> We love him, oh, we love him dearly, but nice he's setup. Out, <laughs> you know. But his yeah. timing, no, Mike is a great drummer. Uh, oh and, yes, I, I gotta best. say, your guys, your guys' show last year. How long had it been that you, you know, before you guys played uh, at in twenty twenty at on January thirty first? What was the venue again? West Seattle, the Parliament. Parliament. How long had it been since you guys played live before that show? Ooh. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh I, months, years, oh, way years. years. Yeah, I well, think, I'll tell you I what, think the last... no one could, no one could tell. You guys were on fire that night. It was such a gift yeah. to to be oh, there, man. Yeah. It was, it was awesome. It really was. That's fun. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. We just did the, uh, the, uh, you know, the usual uh, two to three, two and a half practices before the show, and there we were. Yep. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah. It had to have been oh, 2010, maybe. Really? Or, Probably, yeah. Like it's yeah, the because the last time we played a show, we put out we put out this like double LP kind of like of mm. like a best of kind of of our favorite songs, um, and we did it like a release for it at the sunset, and that was the last show we played. And that, I mean, so it really, literally a decade between shows. Probably, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So. Wow, I don't know, Kurt. Can you remember anything? You have a great memory. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I remember that. Of course, I remember that record, and we did play at the Sunset when that came out, mm. and that was uh, what year it was. I don't remember. Yeah, and that was the last show we did. We didn't do just one for the heck of it. Some I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Maybe I'm trying to. I mean, maybe, but maybe. I'm trying to think of where it would have been. Also, with the sunset. I mean, I think. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the sunset was the last time. Yeah. Yeah. It was our practice place, basically. Yeah, all the roads lead there. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, let let's kick this off. I mean, if Mike if Mike jumps in, that's cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, he does. So where do you they guys want not have, but they might not have electricity out there. You know, <laughs> That's but, true. Seriously. That's yeah. True. Internet connection or electricity, you know, about all the uh, tornado warnings and stuff that might right. have taken out the uh, <laughs> internet grid. Right. <laughs> no, I totally understand that. Well, where do you guys want to kick this off? Do you want to start with how this album came together? I mean, should we start there? Maybe is that, is that sound right? Hey, now? whatever you want, man. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, let's whatever do this. So how did the, how did, how did the new album Lessons Learned come together? And and when, so the last album was put out what year? Like 2006. Okay, so, wow. So we're talking about a 15 mm -hmm. years. So how did this album come to, come together? Um, yeah, give me the, the scoop on that. And uh, however you guys feel, you know, it's kind of like a tennis match. I'm just going to ask you the questions and you guys talk. And of course, as, as gentlemen as you all are, you won't talk over each other, maybe just a little bit, and then. But go ahead. Who wants to kick it off? Tom, do you want to start? You look uh, pretty, uh, pretty. Yeah. Red. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy to think of the time that has passed since that that record in um, in in the Dollhouse came out in two thousand six, um, and you know we did shows to support that, and uh, just a really great time overall. Um, still, really love that record, and and then. I don't like it's not like anything happened it just life just kind of happened and so you know like the, the years go by and and you know we all stay in touch which is I'm really grateful for and then and then you kind of just start missing the music side of things and 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 so it really kind of like after a while I, I just 
you know, I, I just kept writing songs and I just had songs like on this handheld tape recorder and like with cassettes and all these things just to remember these parts that I would come up with so I wouldn't forget them. And then when the pandemic hit and everything was just super isolated, I just kind of busted out all these cassettes that I had and I was just going through parts and like just kind of logging them in and, and just saying like, ah, oh, this, this is kind of cool or this sucks or whatever. And then, you know, and then the parts that I, I really gravitated towards, I, I would just like send them to Bill and like, Hey, what do you think of these parts? And, and I don't know, Bill could probably take it from here, but it was just a real sort of exchange. I, like, I do real, know really just online. I did see Kurt's hand jump up, so I do. I do want to. Oh see. no, I was. I was just. I was just instructing Tom that if he wanted to speak, <laughs> your hand. <laughs> so he kind of usurped the conversation. Oh but no! Okay, because he kind of uh, should. He should be the, <laughs> the usurper. Perfect. If, if, there's some, if somebody says something wrong, I'll jump right in. And Perfect. Yeah, that's what we want. We need that. We need the moderator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, All right, off to you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean that's kind of how it was i think it was last i don't know wait yeah COVID. yeah okay yeah it was probably last april or may i don't know we were just texting and like yeah what do you think of this what do you think of this and then it was just like we were kind of i, I remember wanting to be kind of playful with it like he would send me something and I was like, oh, that's that's super cool. Oh, but let's just try something different. And just like he'd send me like a guitar part that had like a melody on it and some kind of fake words because we haven't we always write words second or last or, or we're trying not to these days. But um, and so I was like, just send me the guitar part and I want to try to sing over it and see what melody I come up with. And then I had sent him stuff that I had done. And then I just sent him my guitar parts minus my vocals okay. and have him come up with a melody and then just see like, because sometimes like you're writing something and you're like, ah, ah. but Tom has this great pop melodic sense. Um, I, I think I have more of the weirder sense but Tom just has this amazing like pop sensibility and he would send these songs back and I'd send the songs back. And a few of the songs like that were on the new record were like literally hybrids of our, of both of our melodies. Nice. And it was fun. It was just like, Oh my God, that's so cool. It's not what I would have thought to do. Mm -hmm. And cause I always kind of do the same thing. And it was just cool to see, to hear a different kind of a melody yeah. over something that, I would typically write on guitar and vice versa. So that was fun. And then we and then we would of course just kind of have flushed out songs that we'd already done. Um, but that's kind of how it that's kind of how it started. And then it was just like Jesus, we should just do a record. Nice. <laughs> and because we had like so many songs. <laughs> and it was just like, wow, let's just why not? And you know, there there you go. And, and then we called Chuck, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so we got to bring Chuck on board to play bass because our old bass player was super busy with his uh, new, he had, a, he had joined a new band. So um, this is and, Chuck's first first record as far as recording with the band, is that correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm told you. They, uh, yeah, how, well, how was that process and experience for you, Chuck? And then was this all done... Uh, remotely and with files were you guys ever actually physically together or how give us a little bit of that insight <laughs> yeah it was it, it was all files for wow. me I know these guys worked I, I don't know they, they can say what they did for me it was all files <laughs> um, but it was awesome because yeah I, I mean you know obviously you know Bill Tom for a long time and so I knew it was going to be cool but yeah Bill just sent me a couple of songs he was like hey we need some bass on this and you know see see what you can do and and uh at first i just sort of thought it was like a demo like it's not the real album or whatever you know so i did like three or four songs like that kind of like pre-production or whatever and he's like fuck yeah this is cool let's go with it so uh, yeah it was, it was cool i really really enjoyed it and uh strangely just kind of fell right in there like it was the the songs are you know really 
well written and just kind of right up my alley. So I had a really good time playing bass on this and doing my thing. Nice. Nice. And well, we, we, we must hear, we, we, we got to hear from Kurt because I mean, he, it sounds like Kurt is, am I right in saying he's kind of the wizard behind uh, putting all the sounds together? Is, is that, is that yes. kind of what happened? I mean, he may not say that, but Tom, is that fair to say? <laughs> I would, I would definitely concur with that. Yeah. I think okay. So. Well, it's he's time to hear very from wizard like. <laughs> ah, wizard taskmaster i like well, you look you like, look like a wizard so. I like finishing stuff and you know i like i you know of course i like all the music and liked all the songs and all the people are playing on it so we would just you know I, uh, some of the stuff that that i worked on was a little bit remote but usually it was, you know, just down in the basement on a Sunday afternoon and Bill and Tom had come over and we'd just bash around at stuff. You know, there's vocal mic set up and guitars and, you know, every, everything that you needed. So drums, you know, <laughs> so it was just like, okay, well, you know, what are we, what are we looking at here? Okay, well, this one's, this one's almost done. It's like, nah, Bill would be like, nah, that's, that's, there's a few of them that were started over a couple times, you know, that's like, ah, it's okay, but it's, you know, we can do better. And so like, you know, a few times things were started from square one a time or two, but you know, most of the time it was just, most of the time it was clear that it was great and everybody agreed on things. And so, so Bill, Bill and Tom did play, they were physically in the same room at the same time working with you at times? Yeah, but, right. yep. you know, not necessarily everybody playing together. <laughs> right. Um, I don't think. I don't think there's ever two people playing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> in classic <laughs> COVID fashion. People, like, you yeah. know, no. there might have been all three of us in the room and we might have all been, you know, haggling together, but um, listening back, playing over tracks that were a typical multi track recording it, in, in some respects. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, it was, it was definitely a multi track recording. Yeah. Right. yeah no. <laughs> For sure. And everything just kind of, you know, it was not a lot of pulling teeth or anything like that. And it's like, oh, yeah. that's killer. Yeah, more, more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do one more. More, more, more. Okay, let's <laughs> leave off the last one. That was plenty. <laughs> so, so you try to put more stuff on than, than you need. And every once in a while, it's like, oh, yeah, more is better. And sometimes, like, no, more, less is no. better. Yeah. So, so how do you guys come up with either, well, there's a couple of questions here. Um, the lyrics, uh, the, the melodies, the, you know, the artwork, tell, tell me some about that, uh, that process of how that comes together. Whoever wants to jump in, feel, obviously feel free. And you can raise your hand, like Kurt said, if you want, but uh, Tom, we'll start with you. I mean, Tom's, Tom's the one I, I grew up with and know, know the best. And I mean, Tom and I are only five days apart, so we're almost kind of twins in some ways so our families <laughs> our families mirror each other there's three brothers that are really similar in age and so i i, I know tom i don't know tom, tom's actually been a such a great person to have in my life so i uh, and we don't see each other time we run into each other concerts it's just kind of ridiculous so there's this like this weird parallel tom joe universe so i guess i <laughs> <laughs> that's a good universe <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so um well, yeah, I mean, gosh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it was all very piecemeal, I would say, you know, there's a lot of lyrics that, um, that I just had on some of these parts that I ju would just, like, if I was sending Bill a, a file, I would just sing these words to them. And then he might tweak some of those. He definitely had a lot of his own lyrics because, you know, just, you just kind of write, like you just write when you have ideas and, and, you know it's it's really cool collectively just to have all, you know all of your your words and your lyrics and then just see what fits and then you start finding maybe a theme or something around this um but definitely like bouncing ideas off each other was just really key um even as in even in the 
the production side of things, like just getting ideas. We really experimented a lot with this record with like acoustic guitar for the first time and like different, you know, um, percussion instruments and, and recording tactics and things like that. Like we really wanted to try to, you know, experiment and kind of just do push the envelope as far as our band is concerned, you know? And yeah. so um, that was I, I really fun and, and yeah, and really fun part of the process So. That's true. I would chime in and a little retroactively in the <laughs> interview, I would say, Please. Kurt, Kurt had a kind of a spot on comment um, that he said that, you know, it wasn't like we weren't pulling any teeth or something like that. Yeah. And that is like so true with the once for kicks. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think that's why like you know, and, and Chuck fits into this like perfectly, but I think it's a big reason why Kurt and Tom and I have been able to, you know, we've done this for like a long time, you know, and, and, and you know, Kurt's had a million other projects and, um, but there's just this thing, I think that we have like a, 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 a pretty decent like communication and band and friendship and, nothing is ever really hard there isn't any pulling teeth there isn't really any like like everyone is kind of pretty open to say what they think about the songs and to give their opinion and i mean no one ever really like no <laughs> at least as far as i know maybe but 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 it's a cool thing i mean it's just like i think it's just what has kind of kept this whole thing kind of going you know and like then having like chuck on and I mean, I remember like when Chuck sent his first bass parts and we'd like listen to them and we're just like, holy shit, this is exactly, <laughs> exactly what we're, it's like Mike Mills. I mean, it's just oh like, my God. it's like the guy's just like, he's so tuned into the songs and just tuned into our whole kind of thing. And it was just like, well, of course this is going to work. And I, I, I don't know. I mean. I think I'm venturing off from the question. Well, no, I mean, but, I mean, but there's what this. A, what, what a compliment. I mean, the fact, I mean, I think a lot of people in music know who that Mike Mills is the bassist. Uh, well, I guess was the bassist at this point of R.E.M. And he's very known, uh, well known for his melody and, and actually the harmony and, and how he sings. But um, yeah, what, what, a, what a compliment. What a, what, a, that might, what a gift to have that come right away rather than, because when you were talking about him, like, I think this is going to go good, but I hope that they're not having to correct everything. <laughs> but yeah, it sounds like it came like immediately. And, and that's, I imagine that's why that you wanted to have him join in. Cause you had this, a sensibility. I imagine after being a musician for decades now, I mean, none of us really feel like we're our ages. We all feel like a, a bunch of kids. Um, but <laughs> what a cool thing to have Chuck, uh, you know, jump in and have that sensibility. Um, it, was, it was an instant good fit. Nice. Just, yeah. From whatever the first song that you sent him was, and it comes back and, you know, just threw it into the, the thing. And it's like, wow, this, this really sounds great. <laughs> you know, it really it works. You know, it, it, it does what it should do better than, you know, any what what it's better than any of us thought it would be. Not, <laughs> not that we didn't think it'd be good, but no, it, it kind of, it kind of actually the bass playing on that recording sort of defines the recording in a lot of ways. It wow, yeah, it's true. So it, I, I, you know, I can't say enough good things about mm -hmm. bass playing. <clears throat> well, which is yep. interesting because because <laughs> usually in typical recording, there's you know, the foundation is the drums and the bass. And it sounds like you guys were, you kind of went about this in a way that maybe that wasn't specifically the case, that that, that well, had to be. A lot of, you know, like in a traditional recording thing, you'd have the, you know, you'd either hopefully record everything at once, drums right. bass, and guitars and stuff, but that was not, that was not the case. So there was a lot of, you know, drums and a guitar as the basis for the thing. And really, in a lot of music now, the, the bass playing is kind of lost its importance in a lot of ways. Like in a, in a lot of popular music, 
you know, the, the, the bass guitar as such is, it, it doesn't fill the same uh, space or it doesn't fill the same uh, need as it did, you know, 30 years ago or something. There's a lot of, a lot of times the, the bass playing on records is almost an afterthought. And, you know, that's not good. <laughs> it's not, you know. Or, <laughs> yeah, or, most musicians wouldn't <laughs> think so. Rebelly or, you know, like, or, you know, not very loud and, you know, not not leading the charge is, is the, the bass guitar in my, my uh, vocabulary should be leading the charge. Right, so you're saying like the essence of like either a, like a, a Primus or or Peter Hook from a New Order, which you know, they're, they're, they're very uh, uh, bass driven songs. Like a lot of that may not really be quite at the forefront of songs now. Right, right, and and even you know pick picking those two people, you know they're not traditional. You know, you know people nobody would argue that they're not tremendous musicians but it's not bass playing as we are have been brought up to uh brought up to 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 know of of you know bass playing being adding this you know more of a kick-ass factor a more you know groovy sort of factor it's the that sort of bass playing it's eight o'clock sort of uh, uh it, it, it it might serve a slightly different purpose than the bass playing of Chuck Keller. Oh, of course, of course. Um, which is no no less in the forefront, but I, I mean, you know, not not sort of '90s or Y2K bass playing. It's... Chuck is the like epitome of. I'm gonna just keep talking about you, Chuck. Let's talk about Chuck like he's not. Just like he go, I, I love Chuck. Man. He's he's like yeah. he's like he, he's like Getty Lee and Mike Mills, so, which are so, which is like I love Rush and I love REM. Right. And I I mean I just think that that is like and that's such a that's actually such a once for kicks thing. It's like we're kind of <laughs> like Rush sometimes. And we're kind of like REM, and we're kind of like some other things. But it is there's just this there's 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 something to say about when the bass like recognizes the melody of the song and just the, right. like and can echo that and um, rather than just keep like a you know I'm just following the kick drum kind right. of a thing and right. so there's playing that I mean, riff, you know. playing the same thing over and over and over. And yeah, over. yeah, 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 yeah. Right, it's flowing. It's musical. <laughs> It's it, musical. I think one of the first ones we heard back was was "Okay, Hey," and we were just like, "Wow, that's amazing!" And then, yeah, yeah, there's this, you know, it was really fun. This whole process has been extremely fun. To like, I mean, it would be way more fun if we could all play in a room. I mean, there's no doubt well, about that. But of course, and to play it was with like someone... opening. It was like opening Christmas presents when you're a kid when yeah. you got the files. Like yeah. if I got a mix from Kurt or a new song from Tom or a bass part from Chuck, I was like, oh God, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you want to open it and you're just like, and, and you like get ready. You like put in your headphones. You're like, oh, this is gonna be so cool. And it was. It was cool every time. Like you know. Well, I got so that, really, that was rewarding. It's really cool to hear that Getty Mills exists. Yeah, yeah. Get, yeah. Get, Getty Mills does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, I, I'm. Yeah, I'm surprised to hear about Getty Mills. Actually, I don't think I've <laughs> thought those two people together, like in in the same context. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't go too much about the bass. I think the only thing I'll say is that is really fun, just because I've known these guys and I've known their music for a long time. I mean, I was a you know we were in high school together and kind of tangentially. We were up in Bellingham, going to Western, kind of tangentially, and um, I saw Sour Mash a bunch of times, like back in the day, like it definitely, you know, and then in Seattle, I kind of reconnected with Bill, but we never did anything musically. You know, I, in, I had all these other projects and stuff that I've worked on for a long time, but, um, you know, the kind of approach I took on this and 
it's taken me a long time to figure this out on the basis, like how to, how to like do something when other people aren't doing something, if that makes any sense. You, well, know, you, actually, <clears throat> you actually listen and paid attention and not typically things a bass player does is pay attention <laughs> yeah. and listen to the other music while they're playing, you know, so. <clears throat> but it's not, you know, it's not real obvious. It's like a lot of, a lot of bass players, they try to be too obvious, you know, or if they, or, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but then you end up being like kind of the showboat bass player, you know, just right. like what I'm going for. So, you know, really just trying to glue the songs together and kind of just give some good lead ins and, and maybe a tasty little thing or two. And, and, and I just kind of went with like the first thing that kind of came to me and it seemed to work. So, um, so it was really cool. What agreed. Yeah, <laughs> it sure worked. It, it, it is. Um, and I, I talked to Tom before, uh, you know, uh, we had this conversation and he actually even informed me a little bit that there's some other songs that are starting to present themselves already. And oh, I mean, so to me uh, as a fan uh, and I, I'm stoked to see you guys. I mean, what's interesting is I was trying to set you up with a show in Tacoma with um, a band called Assertion and uh, Justin Taminga and he just had his band William Goldsmith um, and then uh, gosh our old like, bass player yeah right yeah. And, <laughs> and, and Brian Gorder I mean I mean I was just you know and then of course the the pandemic hit and I was just like, wow, the, you guys, this would be such a great show. And gosh, the fact that you said that is like, duh. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, it sounds like um, maybe it's not going to be another 15 years before the next uh, Once for Kicks album, hopefully. Oh, no. Yeah. Mm. Album? It'll... No. Show? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I will try and make sure I can help with that. I, I you know, I no, I that's not, it's, it's not. It's not about getting the show. <laughs> it's about <laughs> it's about it's playing about, together. It's about logistics. Yeah, understand. Um, my kid is here, just being scared of dragons. Um, that's fine. <laughs> that, hey, me too. so yes, we have. Let's see. Last night I was working on them a little bit, all of these new songs. And Tom and I have now exchanged. I have this like little playlist and there's uh, 17 songs. Wow. And I am so freaking excited about these, <laughs> like way more than I was about Learn Lessons. And I was really excited about that. It's probably what every freaking band guy says. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, I... I I don't know. There's just something like, like, I don't know. To me, I would actually really, I'm, I'm really excited to, to get this done, and I, I'm, I'm really excited to get it done a lot quicker. Uh, I think that, like, I think that's what we kind of set out to do with like learn lessons. Um, that we were just gonna like kind of just go, and to me, it still kind of took. I think we tried a little too hard sometimes. Um, not Chuck or, you know, not Kurt, but uh, just, I, I just think that, like Chuck was saying, and I kind of feel the same way, it's kind of this guided by voices approach to record it. I really want to do this to where I just don't want to try so hard. I want to do the first thing that comes to mind and go with it and just be good with it and get it out because i just think that there's a little bit like i really love learned lessons and there's a couple songs on there that i think that i definitely like no let's do this again let's do this again let's do this again and then now it's like i really just like the demo the best <laughs> like like where it was just kind of what it was um so i don't know i hope that uh hope we can do this i hope we can do this one with mike that's kind of that's kind of my big thing um uh, mike didn't get to play on the last one but uh so can can you yeah. you know tom tom and i tom and i talked a little bit about that which is another un unique way to record um so get how how did the drums come in and i wasn't going to bring it up but now that you have and the cat's out of the bag 
Um, how, <laughs> how did the drums come into play? How did the what? How did that? Who who did the drums? Who played the drums? Or how were the drums programmed? Or uh, whatever you want to expand on on that. I I I'm curious. Let's just say that I did the drums, but I really only played on two drums. Well, no, I only I played drums on two songs. Two drums. Wait. Uh, two, I only played two drums on two songs. No, I actually programmed the drums. Okay, fair I'll enough. I'll throw it out there. I did. I did. But this, this I will like say, free... they're pretty fucking good programmed rock drums. I like, agree, dude. Yeah. I, like, I, I gotta say. <laughs> like, I, I, it doesn't when you sound... told me that, I was like, oh shit, really? Okay. Yeah, I, here's, I'm, I'm here's, very... Here's the thing, though. It's like, we're, because we're old, we have this mindset that like, this is like not the way you should be making a record you know like all remote and like programming doing stuff but like this is how people make records now like we're just we're we're evolving with the times that's what i think we're doing it's You're actually how it. people yeah. probably made records for like a long time <laughs> just like i mean i know punk bands that have programmed drums for years um but uh you know yeah it just it's the way it was it's not perfect by any means but it was what we had so and also um, there were if there was times where the program dump drums didn't quite work we would either supplement them or replace parts of them with actual that's true yeah kurt played like some hi-hat just some like real hi-hat and real ride and real yeah there's yeah we would we would supplement there's nothing wrong with a drum supplement no, it's like vitamins. <laughs> Take one every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Daily drugs. That's true. Well, you you got to do you know as, as someone that you know I've I've you know been playing music for many years uh, and and Tom and I actually what I've learned is we've we've kind of inspired each other. Tom actually reached out uh, you know last week when we were talking and talked about how he, I've been somewhat of, of an influence on him through doing what I do. And I don't think he realizes that when he picked up the acoustic in the last couple of years, uh, that he was an influence on me to, to keep things going. And sometimes as an artist, as and I think even Martin Scorsese said this, and this relates to film, mm -hmm. but you got to make the film that you can make or the album that you can make. Maybe sometimes it's not the one that you specifically want to make. And that doesn't take away from it really, but you gotta do what you can with what you have. And every film project and music project I've done, I've done it for the most part with something called social currency. I haven't had lots of money to do certain things. And, and I think what's cool about your guys project is you maybe couldn't meet, you didn't have Mike Van Buskirk to be there, but you did whatever you could to make this happen. and. I think it's so cool because what it did is when I saw that you released it, it inspired me to get off my ass and have you guys on this show. And I, I just, I thought it was really cool that it's guys that I've, you know, grew up with and have known for years for the most part. And, and there's a camaraderie, there's this brotherly thing that I see in the band and uh, you guys have done what you can. And, and now it's, it's inspired the next project that that's not going to take another 15 years. It's true. It's true. Yeah. No, I hope. Uh, I don't know. I hope you have a good project soon, and we're gonna have. We're gonna start a new record pretty soon. I think. Like it's. It's. Uh, might as well. It's already right? started. It's already started. <laughs> it's already started. Yeah. I can't wait to share the tracks. They're so gotta, good. You gotta start They're with so some good. quality jams in your brain. Yeah, there's some quality jams coming up. Coming out of your and brain. hopefully, hopefully, we will play a show next year. I hope. I really do. I hope we actually get to like, like, like I said, record this um, together. At least, at least with Mike and Chuck and right. Well, well and Kurt and Tom and me. Yeah. <laughs> at least, at least, at least with the whole band. So, so I wanted to ask, um, as far as how did the artwork for the album come together and tell me about the the music video that you guys released um and forgive me i'm, I'm still there's so much of this came together what the the music video was for the song i mean i can guess is it's right here but how did the music video come together and and the artwork for the album 
Mm, I guess I'll have to take that. Um, the artwork was done by this woman, Tuesday Smith. Okay. And she was my next door neighbor. She makes really great art. I love the art. <clears throat> Kurt did the layout. Kurt's always done our art layout and it's always amazing. Uh, there's like never a question. It's like you get the thing and you're like, yep, looks killer. Cause it's just, it is. Again, there's no pulling teeth. Uh, the video I just did because I figured now, what was the song? What's one. the name of the song on the It's video? called Match to See. There it is. Uh, yeah, song and, number eight. Yeah, Match to See. Match to See is basically like, you know, doing the daunting task of like writing, trying to write from like a woman's perspective. Uh, and it's just about a woman that is insecure with friends and fitting in with the current scenes and just finds confidence in herself eventually and just learns to just love herself that it doesn't matter what other people think and uh yeah uh so the actress in it is a friend of mine that worked at the pizza restaurant that i run on the side and uh yeah, she did a great job. It was really fun. We did it over like four weekends. Right. I just did it on my phone. No shit. But, <laughs> yeah. And it's fine. It's like it's it 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 did the job. I wish I had time to do another one, but I don't have time. But uh that was really fun. And right like on. 250 people have seen it and that's really cool or something like that so. <laughs> well i mean hopefully 253 people see it after uh the podcast <laughs> yeah. that'd be amazing <laughs> so, i would i would love that. so um we'll we'll close it out is there any last thing so we want to talk about you know links uh band camp uh any any anywhere that to direct people to get the album and your past albums and all that Anything you guys want to say in closing, uh, feel free in, in whatever order that you want to go. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, it just, I, I'm just really uh, thankful to, to just kind of be in this virtual room with, with you guys. And so I would just like, uh, I think the, the main objective of this call is probably just to let people know about the record and, and bring some awareness around the new record and, and where you can get it. And, um, you know really just try to get some some kind of buzz going around it because uh yeah i mean we're just we're really proud of it and um you know ultimately the goal is just to keep writing and keep writing and keep writing songs and what i really love about our band um among many things is that we can just give these parts or whatever song structure it is to kurt and mike and chuck and and without any directive and they just come back with it just perfect and it's just it just blends together um so i think that's uh just a really special touch uh overall and i don't know that's all i got and we had some great times doing it too some great sunday afternoons with some pizza oh yeah and, uh, you know yeah. microphones and guitars and yeah all kinds of stuff it was every fun. time was amazing yeah it was really fun good. and it was kind of I, I i would just add that it was it was ultimately kind of sad the first sunday after the record that was when it was finished and everybody liked all the mixes and all the things on there and it was like sunday rolled around it was maybe two in the afternoon it's like well those guys aren't coming over today and there's <laughs> there's no more chuck keller uh you know uh, little treats in the email to drop in there and listen uh -huh. you know it was not it was like oh well Oh, whatever happened on oh, Sunday was <laughs> quite as funny. Or, and, you know, but this it was is true. Fun making it, it was uh, super fun making it. And I think now that there's kind of a a workflow that you know could could happen in various ways, but the the, the doors are open again. You know, mm -hmm. the, the 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 garage doors kicked open, <laughs> and uh, it, and anything could happen. And I think it will. I mean, you guys said you have seventeen more songs to uh, consider. 
So I would say that's pretty good, uh, pretty good launching <laughs> point for uh, another another record. That's at least I can. <laughs> that's very true that's very true any last word uh from mr kurt or i'm sorry i i jumped the gun there i uh i i think wait yeah any any last words from kurt or bill how about chuck hasn't we i mean chuck chuck before? sorry it, 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 uh -oh. it's those, yeah. those one syllable names like Joe, Tom, Bill, Kurt, and Chuck. <laughs> throw me off. It kind of is, yeah. They're a real just blue collar. So, sorry, Chuck. It sounds like a construction. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, I just say, um, yeah, it's been a blast, and it's fun to get to connect with these guys musically you know, beyond just the friendship thing. And, um, you know, they graciously granted me like membership into this band. You know, I feel like I sort of don't deserve it or kind of just like the fill in still in my mind, but uh, um, it's been, you know, it's been a, an honor and a privilege to contribute to it. And I'm looking forward to more files falling into my laptops <laughs> so many more files dude yeah, just, <laughs> so many more files. just imagine what it would be like if we were all in the same room playing music together I, oh I, my god I, yeah who knows what that would be like who knows what will happen when that happens yeah yeah <laughs> but it will it will well, ho <laughs> hopefully so that well. that's sooner rather than later so where yeah. can uh where can folks go to find your music i know that there's once for kicks on facebook and then Bandcamp, uh which is not just about uh, american pie and a flute that band camp's an actual site where where independent artists uh are supported i i know they can go on there you go to Bandcamp once for kicks and i seen that it's actually i had my brother chris rosati look up because he asked me he's like are they on uh you know uh itunes and spotify and he looked it up and he did see you guys are on itunes but any other uh info on where they can find your guys music or anywhere you want to direct people and then i'll put links below to uh anything that uh is is you know, obviously gonna help you guys help people mm -hmm. find your music right here yeah so basically like tom's house it's like 4232 82nd Avenue. Uh, no. um, knock on the door. Just I'd knock like on the door. door. <laughs> I'd like to say that. How you doing? Hello. How are you doing? Hello. Hello. No for rent. <laughs> A, uh, I, B, uh, hello. C, good, good evening. evening. <laughs> if C, you are loosening up and should soon be ready for this. Right. Uh, but no, uh, it is available on every single digital medium there is right now. Okay. And it is, you can get it on Amazon Music, iTunes, Spotify, uh, or it's not iTunes, it's Apple Music or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, Bandcamp, you can buy our physical merchandise. We have that double album for sale on vinyl. We have our past CDs. There's, uh, I think, like, 40 or so of the new record left and um yeah and then we're gonna make a new record i would just like to thank you joe this is awesome this is like the first thing that it's the first time we've done anything like this and it was like super great i so appreciate it yeah, um, yeah absolutely like, I, like, like you you know i think i think in closing i you know we've all looked up to bands um our entire lives i i, I think i mean covers that we 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 do music and i think we've all had those aspirations like oh you know we look up to those bands when we're kids that are in their 20s and 30s and they made it and then you get in your you know i'm not going to age uh, all of us but i think people have a clue as to that we're not in our 20s or 30s anymore and then you're like well wait now who do I look up to? Because I don't really know anyone that's doing specifically what I'm doing in certain ways that, you know, um, that specifically exactly what you're trying to do. So, you know, we just got to keep being those people that the little kid in, in us keeps looking up to and whatever that is. And, and that's when I heard that you guys put this out and, and saw that, you know, of course that Tom was part of it. Uh, I was just like, you know, I, I, 
I've, Tom's been a brother to me. I don't even think, I don't know if he realizes how much he's really been um, someone I've looked up to. Uh, and, you know, he's in, in the musical projects that he's been part of. Um, but anyway, I love you guys. And uh, I just, I wanted to contribute and tell your story. And I love helping people tell their stories because um, we can use more camaraderie and love in this world because uh, it's kind of a mess right now. So um, your, when your album came out, I'm like, that's a beacon to me of something that I want to help get behind. And I was so stoked and I, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, and I'll, I'll be putting this on my YouTube and links. And I just want you guys, you know, share it with whoever you want. And, uh, I mean, this is new for me. I haven't done a podcast in a couple of years as far as my own. Mm. So, um, I'll figure out where I'm going to put this and all that jazz, but you guys have inspired me to get off my ass and uh, do this again. Awesome, dude. Uh, well said, man. Yeah, super great. Thank you so much. Right on. All right, I'm going to end cool. it and uh, check out Once for Kicks on Bandcamp, uh, on Spotify, on iTunes, and their, their new video on YouTube. All right, guys, take care, and we'll do this again when the new album comes out with Mike Van Busker. <laughs> and your <laughs> And your <laughs> And your <laughs> All right, dudes, right, take night, care, guys. man. Thanks. Thanks. Later. Rock on. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>